Hi folks, thanks for tuning in. My name's Tim Newman and I'm part of the Leisure team here at Ordnance Survey. Uh, what I'm going to show you over the next few minutes is a tour of various maps and how you can use it to plan a great outdoor adventure. So um, just to start with a little bit of uh, introduction to the basics of OS Maps, there's a web version we're going to be looking at here and a companion app for iOS and Android. And generally we find that the web version is used um, or really useful for planning a trip, um, looking in advance where you might want to go, and then the app comes into its own when you're actually out and about and needs something to navigate with. So the two work hand in hand together and we'll take a look at that now. So let's imagine we're heading off to the Lake District and we want to plan a route in the Langdales. So I'm just going to search here in the top left for the Langdales, Great Langdale here, and that takes you uh, straight away to that place on the map. You'll notice here hopefully the, the mapping, this is our 1 to 25,000 mapping, uh, you'll recognise it from the orange explorer maps. And this is all part of the OS map subscription, so you get full access to what's the equivalent of 607 paper maps, um, all available to, to view on the web, view on the app, um, and then as you'll see shortly to print off or to download to your phone so you can use it offline. So let's say we were, we're coming here, um, you might want to find a route to follow and you perhaps don't have enough time or the inclination to, to, to do it yourself. So one of the great things about OS Maps is it comes preloaded with um, over a million routes now. Um, some of those are from other users who've contributed them. Some of them are from our trusted partners like Country Walking or AA Walks. And so it usually means there's a really good route um, already in the system wherever you might be looking. So if I open the routes menu here and click on discover routes, let's imagine um, we've got say, you know, four, four or five hours, you adjust the distance here uh, and take a look at what options we've got. So here are all of the, uh, the routes starting here from, uh, from Dungeon Gill. Uh, and you can see there's, there's a good range already. Um, and a little preview there on the left as to uh, which routes there are. Uh, so let's pick pick a random one. Um, this is a nine kilometre route, starting from Elta Water. Uh, looks quite nice. This uh, gives a little bit of a description of the route. Uh, and then I could open up the elevation profile to see uh, how it's going to be height wise uh, and work out if it's the sort of thing that I'd like to follow. So. One of the things we find really useful with the web version is um, although the 25k and the 50k mapping does give you a huge amount of detail um, if you're able to interpret it, uh, it's actually really easy to, uh, to look at it and just and, and see a lot of uh, complicated symbols, contours, and some people just want a really easy way of visualising a route before you head out. So we added the fly-through mode um, to allow people to see what they're letting themselves in for before they head out. So I'm going to click on that now, and this is going to show us what that route might look like uh, in 3D. So as you can see, uh, a nice flat start. You can see some of the points of interest you might pass on the route. Uh, and this will fly us through the route, uh, giving us a really good idea of A, how strenuous the route's going to be, um, but then B, you know, how safe we're going to feel on it. So as you can see, this is quite a low level route. Um, it's not too, uh, not too high. There's not too many knife edge ridges or uh, cliff tops. So probably quite a good route if you're a little bit less confident. Um, and there we go, it's taking us back to the start. One of the, the nice things about 3D mode is uh, all of the imagery is captured by uh, our planes that fly over the country uh, every every few years and they only fly when the sun's out so uh, always a good way of viewing the lake district in the sunshine <laughs> is the 3d mode so let's say uh, we liked the look of that route um, and we think we want to try it out so i'll just flick back now to the uh, leisure mapping we we generally recommend a couple of things before heading out on a route you found. So the first thing to do is to uh, to make sure you've got a paper backup. So um, the app's reliable. Um, it works down, when you download the maps offline. You don't need a signal, uh, but it's always best to have something that never runs out of battery. So uh, with OS Maps, you can print off uh, unlimited printing of our 25k and 50k maps. Uh, so if I click on print there, in the bottom left there, you can see the area you're going to print. We'll print it to scale um, and we'll print that A4 portrait um, and then I'll just show you what that looks like um, on the preview. So you can see a uh, preview of the, the map there and uh, a little bit of extra information on the route card. So you can take that with you and know you've always got a paper backup. 
The other thing you might want to do is download it to your phone. So I'm going to sh show you that now. Um, as I said before, the, the app and the web work really well together. Um, and if I add this route to my favorites here on the web, then that syncs across between web and app. So it means now I can open up the Earth Maps app on my phone and we'll be able to see the route there. So we're now going to take a look at the mobile app and see how the route which we found and favorited on web has synced across and then what we can do with it once it's on our device. So I'm going to go onto the routes list and tap on my favorite routes. Uh, the route was called uh, OS Pathfinder Elterwater, so let's have a quick search for that. And you'll see it's synced across and is now on my phone on the routes list. So I'm looking here at the Apple app. Um, we also have an Android uh, version too. So I've clicked on the route and as you can see, it's on the screen. It's exactly the same route as we were looking at before with exactly the same mapping available. What, what you want to do next on mobile is make sure that mapping is downloaded to the device, which means you can head out and you don't need any phone signal at all um, to work with OS Maps. So if I tap on download map here, you can see that's downloaded all the mapping for that route. Uh, it's saved on the device. It means you can then head out. You don't need any phone signal. Um, and actually it's often quite good to then put your phone in flight mode. You can check that it's working. You can check you don't need a phone signal and that saves quite a lot of battery too if you're out for a, a walk or a run all day. So I've got that saved on the phone. Um, that means when you're out, as long as you've got a clear view of the sky, it can find out your location via GPS um, and you'll see the map, you'll see the route and you'll see your position marker showing exactly where you are. So it takes a lot of the hassle out of uh, navigation. The one thing to uh, point out now is uh, if you're actually heading out, obviously I'm not in the Lake District now, unfortunately, but if I clicked start route whilst I was there, it would look for my location and it would plot where I was on the route and tell me how far I've got to go, uh, both time and distance. Uh, one of the other nice things with this is if you wander off track, then it will also give you a, a buzz in your pocket to say you've gone off track. You can get the app out and check uh, where you are and what you need to do to get back. So it means you don't have to sort of walk around with your phone out the whole time and <laughs> you can spend a bit of time enjoying where you actually are. Cool, so back to the web version now. Um, let's imagine we wanted to have a little bit more control over the route we were doing. So instead of picking one of the thousands in the database already, we want to create our own one. Um, let's change the, the place a little bit. Um, so let's up, head up to Northumberland. Uh, here's a place called Linhope, which we can explore. So I've, I've searched for that. Uh, it's dropped a pin there. And I'll zoom out a little bit just to see uh, a little bit about the area. So this, as you can see, is quite a remote place. Uh, it's in Northumberland and quite far from roads and other settlements. The nice thing about the mapping here is it's using the relevant data for the zoom level we're in. So as I zoom in, we're looking at 50K mapping here. So that's the, the pink Land Ranger maps. And I zoom in further, I get to 1 to 25,000 mapping here, which uh, is the orange Explorer maps. So zooming in here, we can see there's a little, uh, little settlement called Linhope. Uh, also, interestingly, there's a lot of uh, historical looking places. So you can see the kind of old fashioned writing here denotes historic places of interest. But there's also a huge amount of detail packed into 1 to 25k mapping, and uh, it makes it really easy to plan a route according to your exact um, wants. And let's have a quick look at some of those features now. So, one of the really important things to look at is rights of way. So, in the UK, we have a fantastic network of public rights of way, and on 1 to 25k maps, then those are shown with green dotted lines. So, you can see here there's this uh, green dotted line going through Linhope. And that is a bridle way. So the slightly longer dash means it's a bridle way so you can walk, you can cycle, uh, or you could ride a horse down it. Uh, a shorter dotted line like this is a public footpath. So you can walk uh, or run, but you can't cycle or take a horse down there. The uh, other interesting thing here is the slightly kind of orangey brown layer, which is uh, called access land. So that means you can walk along wherever you want to. You don't have to stick to a public right of way, um, but you're, you've got the right to roam. So let's start our own custom route. I'm going to click on routes menu and then create custom route and we'll click in Linhope to start us off. So one of the nice things about routes in national parks is they are automatically snapped to uh, the legal rights of way. So as you can see here, you can select what you're doing. So walking, running or cycling. So I'm going to select a running route here um, and that will mean it will take me down uh, places where I'm allowed to run. So it could be uh, footpaths, it could be bridleways or actually it could be anywhere. Once you're in the access land, then you can follow any track or path. And so as I click, you'll see 
uh, that footpath line snaps to the bridle way um, and makes it a lot easier to, to plot a route. The other interesting thing I mentioned was these historical sites and if you were particularly interested and wanted to kind of add some points of interest to your route um, you can click on the places menu um, and see the various points of interest layers we've got. So I've, I've selected scheduled monuments and uh, I wanted to find out a little bit more about what this settlement was. So I've clicked on the point um, and you can see it's an unenclosed settlement with some prehistoric settlements as well. Um, so I've clicked add to route. Um, and that means we're taking that in. So if you're into um, you know, making your walks or runs a little bit more interesting, you can see all of the information here and plan your route accordingly. So uh, as we've taken that in, um, perhaps we want a bit of a workout. So we'll head up to the top of uh, this peak here. You can see from the contours, it's quite an ascent, but up a nice ridge and it's on a bridle way. So we'll, we'll keep plotting. As you can see, it's, it's tracing its way over the bridle way uh, and then dropping down here to a river and we'll follow that river kind of contouring back to sort of try and have a slightly more level return journey. Um, if I close the places menu you'll see as I'm plotting uh, the elevation profile is showing so it gives you a really good idea of uh, exactly how much up and down you're going to do. As I said the idea was to go up and then kind of come back down to river level and, and keep it fairly level and so I'll finish plotting off down here back to the start and you can see this is the overall shape of the route. Uh, we can see it's taking 13 kilometers um, and, a, and a rough time if you're uh, trying to plan a certain time and distance. You can also see at the bottom here we have the uh, lowest and highest points as well as total ascent and that's really useful. Um, obviously total ascent certainly makes a route harder but then you can see how high it's going, compare that to the weather forecast to see whether your route's going to be in cloud or how windy it's going to be. So another really useful feature. So once I save that um, I've got the option to uh, change the route difficulty, adjust what type of route it is and then select whether you want to share it with everyone or you want it just to be your own personal route. So I'm going to click only me for this time. That means it's saved to your account um, and that means no one else can see it but it syncs across all your devices. So it will also be available on the app now um, but it's, it's uh, saved there. So I can see it as an overview um, and exactly the same principle um, with the route we found in the Langdales you can use a, a fly through just to see whether it's the sort of route that you hoped it would be. So I click that. Um, what it's doing now is, is building a terrain model and it drapes over the aerial imagery we've captured. Um, and now we're flying through, gives us a good idea of the type of route we're in for. You know, you can tell it's gonna be a remote route. Uh, it looks like it's quite sort of more under the top, could be quite boggy. Uh, this is the, the most exposed part of the trip, uh, a kind of ridge. And then, as we said, when we were plotting it, dipping down to the river and then following this nice river along the way back. So quite a nice route um, and it means, you know, if the weather's closing in, you're getting down low and you've got a slightly more sheltered return journey. The other nice thing about this fly through is even if you understand exactly uh, how to read a map and how to interpret contours, if you're going out with someone else, they might not. Um, and I think often it's really useful to be able to show them exactly what you're about to head out and do. Um, and I think that's what some of the feedback we've had from other people using Earth Maps. Um, I've spoken to mountain leaders and people who, who like using the fly through just to show groups exactly what you're going to do. Um, and it's a really nice way of communicating that without all the group necessarily having to understand contours, having to understand how to read a map. So I'm just going to close that down now and then recap what you might do if you were actually going to follow this route. So as with before, really important to have a paper backup. So if you don't have a paper map of the area, you can print one off um, and you can print that at A3 or A4. And then the second thing to do is to get it on the phone, download it to your device, and then you can navigate the route without any signal at all. So one of the things uh, you can also do with OS Maps, obviously, if an area like this is out of reach, um, you can explore a little bit closer to home. So I'm going to close this route in the uh, Northumberland National Park. Uh, I'm going to click on the Centre Me button on the, on the bottom right, and that's snapped to my current location at the OS head office. Uh, one of the things that's really nice about OS Maps is the ability to see different layers of mapping depending on, on where you are. So uh, in the middle of a city, which is where you might be and where you might be planning a, a walk or a run, uh, it's actually perhaps a little bit less relevant to see things like contours because, you know, mostly it's built up. So you might want to swap at that point over to our standard map, which gives a lot of detail for uh, the middle of a city. Uh, and the other layers we have 
are an aerial map, which gives you uh, a much clearer view of exactly what's on the ground. You know, sometimes you can't quite work out from the map exactly what it's going to be like. So switch over to aerial um, and then you get a really high definition uh, aerial photo, which comes from our planes, which fly across the country every, every few years. Then we've also got a number of overlays which give you supplementary information um, and one of the ones that's been super useful recently is, uh, is green space. So um, we found that during lockdown people obviously couldn't travel as far, they wanted to explore their local area and the green space map ha helps you do just that. So it's a map of all of the green spaces in, in cities and towns. Uh, I'm in Southampton here and you can see this is Southampton Common but you could go anywhere um, and even these you know small uh, far less uh, exciting but still uh, it, it's a bit of green space it might be close to home and it's really nice if you're planning a route just to take in you know you try and string these together and make the route a little bit more exciting so uh, this shows places like public parks uh, it shows things like golf courses uh, and sports facilities playing fields so it's worth having a look around where you are uh, and seeing what uh, facilities there are for you to kind of get a bit of nature but perhaps closer to home the other layers we've got as well as green space are uh, the national cycle network so if you're into cycling then i'll zoom out here and you can see this is a, a network of cycle routes that covers the country so if you're planning a, a cycle ride you can see here what's traffic free what's on road depending on what you feel comfortable with uh, and that's a really useful tool for plotting uh, where you might want to go on a bike I think the other thing to uh, just talk about here is the, the, the ability to kind of be an armchair explorer. So um, you might want to plan specifically for a holiday, you might want to plan some routes close to home, but also we live in a pretty beautiful country and you can explore any corner of that with, with OS Maps. So um, I'll flick back onto the, to the leisure maps. Um, uh, now, as I said at the start, there were uh, 607 paper maps you'd need to cover the whole of the country. So probably most of you <laughs> won't have that in your library, but uh, with OS Maps, you can see wherever you want to explore. So um, I can zoom in, I can zoom out, um, and we can pick a random place uh, and see, you know, we could go down to the Isles of Scilly. Uh, even if you're not planning a trip there, sometimes interesting just to see how, how varied that Britain is. Uh, and you can see vineyards, <laughs> you can see beaches. Um, and then I might zoom in to north of Scotland, and I can do exactly the same thing, go up to the Shetland Isles and just have a look at uh, what's, what's available if, if you're able to travel. So uh, this, this island here, Fooler in, uh, in the north of Scotland, is interesting because it was our, our least popular place for custom-made maps. So we, we have a, a system where you can get a map focused on wherever you want. Uh, the, this little island in Scotland uh, didn't have a single custom-made map uh, made of it so <laughs> we made some for all of the residents there to show our love but uh, again you can zoom in and out see wherever whatever detail you want so just to finish off um, I'm going to show you a sneak peek of what's coming along in OS Maps so so far I've been demoing on the old version of OS Maps web um, and what you're looking at here is a new version which is going to be rolled out shortly um, and that includes a whole raft of new uh, tweaks and, and improved features and one of those things is uh, international mapping. So, so far we've just been looking at GB, um, but if I zoom out here, you'll see that the mapping no longer stops at the borders of the country, but we can keep going and see the rest of the world. So anywhere on the planet now, you can see a standard map on OS Maps and use it to plan any trips or just have a nosy around different corners of the planet. So I'm gonna keep zooming out and uh, move over to Australia because that's the first country we've been uh, working with to give a equivalent of OS Maps over there. I think the thing worth noting here is it's all one subscription so it's £24 a year and that gets you all of the uh, premium mapping I've showed so far so all 607 of those pink and orange maps but then it now includes all of the world at the standard map level and so as we add more data and more countries that just uh, applies to the same subscription you don't have to pay any extra for them and they're and they're available for you to use the subscription also includes things like the uh, 3d fly through which i showed earlier um, and other, other features that are, are for our premium users so if i zoom over to australia uh, you'll notice this is the same style of standard mapping as we've seen in gb uh, but if i flick over to our premium topo layer then we can see this is the same data as Ordnance Survey produces, but over in Australia. Now, 
we haven't gone out and remapped Australia, but um, we've gone to the, uh, some partners in Australia. And what we're trying to do here is just pick the best data available and, and make it really easy for OS Maps users to, uh, to use that. So in the same way as in GB, as I zoom in, we'll just zoom through different layers of mapping. So down towards Sydney, uh, let's have a look at the, the Blue Mountains. I keep going. It will switch over to 1 to 250k mapping, which is this. And we've got this for the whole of Australia. But then if I keep zooming in, then the mapping will switch over to a more, a more detailed view. Uh, and in Australia, it's a bit different to the UK. Each state has their own uh, type of mapping. Uh, around Sydney, this is mapping from New South Wales. Um, and it's, this is the most detailed now you can see. So contours, footpaths, rivers, everything you'd expect from a topo map. Um, and as I said, this is all now included in the OS Map subscription, um, available on your phone, or it will be available through this new OS Maps web version, which we've just finished and we're going to be rolling out soon. So just before we go, um, there are two more things I wanted to show you on mobile. The first of those is our AR mode. Now, we came up with this a couple of years ago when we thought about how great it is when you have a paper map, you can spread it wide and you can have a really good view of the, uh, the wider context. If you're at the top of a mountain, you can see what mountains you're looking at, what lakes, what settlements those are in the distance. Um, and so the AR mode allows you to do that, but from a phone device. So obviously a phone screen is much smaller. You see much less mapping on it than you would on a big paper map. Uh, but with AR mode, you essentially can take the phone, hold it up to the horizon, um, and you'll see the phone's picture with different things labelled. Uh, it's not really worth showing in here because uh, we're inside, but here's uh, a shot of uh, how it works out in Hengsbury Head. And as you can see, uh, a really nice way of looking around, seeing what's on the horizon. You can see uh, towns labelled, you can see bodies of water, and it just gives you that wider context that sometimes you don't get when you're looking at a small bit of map on a screen. And the second thing I wanted to show you is what we call Tabletop 3D. So this is a feature on iOS, and it essentially allows us to take what works really well on web, that mobile, uh, that, that 3D fly-through, uh, and show it on a smaller mobile device. So it, again, it uses augmented reality technology. Um, so I found a route in Snowdonia. What you then need to do is find a, a flat surface, something like a you know, carpet or your coffee table works really well. Um, and I'm going to show you now this route in Snowdonia. So essentially, it looks like you've got a, a 3D model and you can pan around that 3D model. This is out uh, in Snowdonia, uh, a walk around uh, Trivan, and essentially it allows you to do a similar thing. So you're looking uh, at the route in, in full 3D. Uh, it gives you a really good idea of what you're about to do. Uh, you could use it, use it for showing other people as well if they're not quite sure uh, what you're letting yourselves in for. So you can see on this route, it's quite a steep uh, cliff, not the sort of thing you want to take a beginner up. So uh, that's all from me. Thanks for uh, tuning in. I hope that's given you a good idea of what you can do with OS Maps. Uh, everything I've shown you so far has been part of our OS Maps subscription. So that's something you can get for £24. It's available via the OS shop uh, and un unlocks all of the layers of mapping you've seen, all 607 paper maps, uh, all of the features like the 3D fly through. And then as we add new things down the line, like mapping for Australia, that's all included in the same subscription. So I hope that's uh, whet your appetite and shown you how you can use it to plan a great adventure in the outdoors. Thanks very much for your time and thanks for listening.